called the meeting of the first one kind of commissions to order. Well, I'm all here to come in. I, I guess I'm going to say I'm glad to see you. We'll know in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> You'll ought to be glad. Uh, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Um, Mr. Evans, uh, safety instructor, please. Yes, sir. I'd like to call Mr. William Johnson to be our safety instructor. Good evening, everyone. To provide for the safety of those attending this meeting, I want to give the following instructions in case of an emergency. First, please take a moment to note where your exits are. If an emergency arises that prompts us to evacuate, I ask that everyone exit this room in a quick and orderly manner through one of the two doors to your right. Then proceed to the nearest stairwell, directions to which are indicated by exit signs. Once you exit the building, we ask that you safely cross the street to either of our parking lots to be safely away from the building. Our, st our staff will help provide direction and assistance. In the case of a tornado warning, we ask that you exit this room into the hallway where we will remain until it is safe to exit. In the event of an active shooter in the building, we will run if there is an accessible escape path, try to evacuate the premises, hide if you cannot evacuate, please find a place to hide where you are less likely to be found, lock any doors that you can, fight. As a last resort, and only if your life is in intimate danger, our staff will provide assistance on what to do. Thank you for your attention. You talk about our Father, we give thanks for another beautiful day. We ask that you bless our minds and our hearts and we be concerned about the things that make our county a better place in which to live. Help us to think of the things that are prosperous for us. Bless us as we share together in Christ's name. <coughs> Next item on the agenda is to call a public hearing to order to receive citizens' comments and questions relative to a proposed change in county animal service ordinance. No, minutes, you are missing one. Minutes are free to meet you. Uh, the in your agenda package. Uh, Motion to approve. Second. Questions? All in favor, let it be known by the room sign aye. Aye. All opposed? There is none. The minutes are approved. Next on the agenda. Public hearing is called to order to receive citizen comments and questions relative to proposed change to the animal, county animal service department. The public hearing is called to order. Mr. Peters, would you please read the public Yes, the public sir. notice. Notice is hereby given that a public hearing will be held on Monday, January 6, 2020. I believe it's supposed to be February 6, 2020. February 3rd, 2020, at 7 p.m. in the Commissioner's Room in the Administrative Building at 201 St. Andrew Street, Harbor, North Carolina. The purpose of this public hearing is to consider an act on proposed amendment to Article 2 Animal Services and Article 3 Wild and Dog Animals of the Edge County County Code of Ordinances. The proposed amendments are intended to clarify and improve the provisions of the County's Code of Ordinances to better protect the welfare of animals and to protect the public. A copy of the proposed amendments is on display for public inspection in the Office of County Manager in the County Administration Building on 402 St. Andrew Street, Harbor, North Carolina, 2786, during regular business hours. A copy may also be viewed on the county's website at edgecombecountync.gov. All parties interested are invited and urged to be present and make their views known. Anyone with a physical limitation or language barrier that will need special accommodations at the public hearing should call 252-641-7834 at least 48 hours prior to the meeting. Thank you, Mungo, to work to the board. Mr. Chairman, I believe that was, <coughs> the hearing was called to order last month in January and it was continued held open. This is a recess meeting. So that's why the date was long enough. This is a recess call, okay. Is <coughs> it, yes, Mr. Evans? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Um, at your January meeting, you opened the public hearing to consider changes to the county's ordinances uh, pertaining to animal services. The changes proposed by the Animal Welfare Advisory Council include adding in Article 2, Section 4-33, for quote, adequate shelter, under the description for what does not constitute adequate shelter, um, the word metal to barrel. So in other words, um, they are recommending adding that word to say that barrels can be used for shelter, but not metal barrels. They also recommend changes to Article 3, which are numerous. In summary, the changes include reference to inherently dangerous animals instead of wild and exotic animals as it currently reads. It defines what inherently dangerous animals are. It bans inherently dangerous animals in the county 
with the noted exceptions, and it leaves the responsibility of permitting and enforcement of those exceptions to the appropriate state and federal agencies. You continue the public hearing in order to give the Animal Welfare Advisory Council another opportunity to clarify the definition of inherently dangerous animals. They have done so, and the final is presented for your <coughs> I recommend that you excuse me, reopen the public hearing on this matter. Pending public comments, the recommendation of the Animal Welfare Advisory Council is to approve the ordinance changes as presented. Um, I, I'd like to mention that Ms. Uh, Kathy Williams, who is the chairperson of the Advisory Council, is here. If she'll come up in case you have questions. <coughs> While she's making her way up, if you'll look excuse me, in your packet, you'll see just behind my memo, the first page for section 4-33, you'll see noted a little over halfway down the page in red, recommendation to add the word metal in front of barrels. Um, turning over to the next page, I won't go through this as you've seen as quite detailed, but I do want to point out that at the bottom of page one, uh, in red there, you will see uh, the definition of inherently dangerous animals. And it's quite detailed, and I appreciate the advisory council, uh, you know, being meticulous and going through that, making sure to uh, uh, put in a, an ordinance that would protect our citizens but not be overly restrictive for animals that may be uh, commonly kept, not commonly, but sometimes kept, but not necessarily inherently dangerous. On page two, near the bottom, you'll see that section 4-133 is the section, or is proposed to be the section, which um, talks about <clears throat> the possession of inherently dangerous animals being prohibited. You'll see there in that paragraph in red the exceptions that are listed. So the exceptions include um, lawfully operated pet shops, zoological parks, or exhibitors, that are licensed by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, scientific research laboratories, circuses, carnivals, and veterinarians, provided that they are maintained in ways that um, will um, make, prevent them from escaping, and persons temporar temporarily transporting such animals through the county so as long as transit time is not more than 24 hours. Certainly, all the sections, in particular the changes recommended, are important but I wanted to draw your attention to those in particular. So again, uh, Ms. Kathy Williams is here as uh, uh, the voice of our advisory council. I want to thank her and the rest of the members um, uh, for all the hard work they put into this. At, at this time, we'd like to reopen the hearing for public comments. Is there anybody here to speak? If so, please come forward and state your name and address. Is there anybody here to speak? Hearing none, I'd like to adjourn the public hearing, and the recommendation is to approve the changes as presented. Is there a motion? So moved. Okay. Questions? All in favor, let it be named by the vote saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Hearing none, it is approved. Thank you so much. Thank you all, much. Thank you all for your time, <laughs> uh, especially as I look at some of this. <laughs> you know it's just <laughs> thank you for your time. Thank you. Schedule appointment. Uh, <coughs> Sheriff, would you please come by? Uh, Mr. Evans? Yes, sir. So, uh, Sheriff has to be on the uh, agenda <coughs> tonight. Okay. Um, he's going to have Chief, Chief Deputy Gene Harrell to uh, give a presentation on his behalf, and then Sheriff, I believe, to go Good enough. to make Good enough. Good evening. Good evening. <coughs> First, I'd like to thank you for allowing me to stand before you and thank Sheriff Atkinson for allowing me to speak on behalf of the Sheriff's Office. We have in front of you, I believe, what we call the State of the Office of the Sheriff 2019. The purpose of this presentation is to give you an overview of what is going on within your Sheriff's Office and a forecast of issues to be addressing and future needs. A majority of the focus will be on salary. You will see later that the salary issues are continually hurting us with recruiting and retaining staff members, mainly in the detention center and amongst our deputies. Just a few facts about the Sheriff's Office. The Edgecombe County Sheriff's Office employs over 140 people. It's comprised of the following divisions. 
our support staff, our office staff, telecommunications, detention center, animal service, and our sworn deputies. The deputies are organized into four separate divisions. Our uniform patrol division, our civil division, our criminal investigations and narcotics division, and our school resource officers. Sheriff Atkinson was first appointed. He interviewed all employees and questioned us about our values. From this, the values you see before you are what we are to live by, with respect, integrity, and professionalism being our core values. Throughout this presentation, you'll see money that is generated by the Sheriff's Office as well as some of the expenses that we incur. North Carolina General Statute 14-415.19 addresses fees from each concealed carry permit. In 2019, 863 concealed carry weapon applications were processed. $35 of each was supposed to come back to the Sheriff's Office. A total of $30,205 was brought in from these permits, and to our knowledge, these funds never reached back to the Sheriff's Office. We understand that the detention center is very costly. Captain Washington, our jail administrator, and Sheriff Atkinson do all they can to cut costs anywhere that will not jeopardize the safety of our staff and inmates and to make up for these costs by bringing in revenue. few of the ways that we generate revenue. In 2019, we housed 607 federal inmates, 344 state inmates under the misdemeanor confinement program, our paytail system, our commissary, and the county is paid $35 per hour for personnel that we have to sit with federal inmates while at the hospital. Total revenue from the detention center in 2019, $1,050,736.33. Within our detention center, we have ongoing staffing issues, due in large part to salaries. There are 57 detention positions. Currently, we have eight vacancies one upcoming retirement, and five who have gave notice to us that they are looking employment elsewhere. In 2019, we lost nine detention officers, six to better paying jobs, two of those went to the Pitt County Detention Center, one for disciplinary reasons, and two for medical reasons. We have compiled a list of surrounding agency salaries, with Edgecombe County being $27,065. And if you'll see Pitt County, where we lost those two detention officers, their starting salary for detention is $41,000. <laughs> These are what our detention officers face on a daily basis. They are assaulted by the inmates. Of course, the inmates assault each other. They have to deal with death of inmates while in custody. Numerous sprinkler heads have been broken. Over age, some of the doors in the detention center are able to be manipulated by the inmates to where when they're locked in their cells, they can get out on their own. We're working closely with our maintenance department to see if we can fix this issue. They're having to use force, <coughs> continuous flooding of the cells, and they have to deal with communicable diseases. Again, you'll see the starting <coughs> salary for our detention officers is $27,065, which equals $13.01 per hour. A little research showed that the average starting salary at Walmart, $14.26, <coughs> and at Lowe's, $13.19. <coughs> Our patrol division. 
In 2019, they took 1,163 incident reports, ranging from petty <coughs> larceny to homicide. <coughs> 39,606 calls for service. We have an immediate need for body count. <coughs> I'm not going to go through all of this data, but I would like to highlight it. In 2019, our deputies conducted 21,945 house and business checks. This is a service that we provide to our citizens and our businesses at zero cost. They responded to 699 motor vehicle records. Due to a shortage of the State Highway Patrol troopers, our deputies are having to respond to these records. These tie our deputies up for hours at a time waiting on the trooper to arrive. We unlocked 178 vehicles. This is a service that we provide to our citizens, whether they're in town or in the county, at no charge. Harbor Police Department offers the same service, but they do charge a fee. <coughs> 545 escorts, with a lot of these being funerals. We're called in the city of Rocky Mountain to provide funeral escorts. The Rocky Mountain PD charges for this service, and we do it at no cost. Mm. We conduct 518 <coughs> mental transports. 518. We transport people daily to locations such as Raleigh and Garner, Ahoski, Jacksonville, Winston-Salem, Charlotte, Thomasville, and Keenansville. These transports are only made by the Sheriff's Office. And they keep our staff out of the county sometimes for an entire shift. about our traffic enforcement. Traffic enforcement is a very important role for law enforcement. As you can see from the listed data, it often reveals more crimes being committed. 46 DWIs is an impressive number for an agency that does not have a designated traffic unit or traffic officer on each squad. I've also highlighted 9,925 credits were earned for the Governor's Highway Safety Program. These credits are used to receive equipment at no cost to the county. <coughs> the staffing issues continue with our patrol, in large part to our salaries. We have 57 positions available at Edwards, 7 vacant positions as of today. 2019, we lost nine deputies, six to better paying jobs. One of those to Rocky Mountain Police Department, two to Pine Tops Police Department, one to Tarboro Police Department, one to the town of Tarboro, and one who took the magistrate's position in Halifax County. Two deputies were lost for disciplinary reasons, and one retired. There's a lot of significance about these two photographs here. To your left, to the left of the screen, I'm sorry, you will see Sergeant Dozier. To the right, Captain Dozier. Sergeant Dozier retired with 30 years from the town of Tarboro with only 18 years of those in law enforcement. He was responsible for the supervision of four personnel during his career. Captain Dozier is still part of our team and a member of our senior command staff. He has 27 years of law enforcement experience, all here at the Sheriff's Office and under his command supervises over 40 deputies. Mm -hmm. 
when Sergeant Dozier retired, his salary was $5,000 more than Captain Dozier. Mm -hmm. <coughs> the picture on this slide says a lot. This was a motor vehicle crash that our deputies responded to out on 64 Alton between Tarver and Rocky Mount near what we call Lake Valley. You'll count six of our deputies down in that creek. <coughs> Five of them standing in the water assisting the first responders in getting this lady out of this vehicle. We've noticed that with the ability to earn holiday pay, our sergeants at the end of the year are making just as much money as our lieutenants. One of the first things Sheriff Atkinson did after being appointed was to form his command staff. Your Sheriff's command staff has close, if not over, 200 years of combined service and experience. It consists of senior deputies and senior detention officers. Six of these command staff members are required to be on call a week at a time for every, every six weeks. They're not paid to be on call and they're not being paid overtime in the event that they are called out. And the reason the word homicide is up there, this past October, our entire command set was called out for a homicide and stayed out probably 12 to 13 hours that day with no compensation. I'm working with Mr. Evans and Ms. Booth on the next bullet point. We have learned for the past 11 years We've been turning in 13 timesheets and only receiving 12 paychecks. Mm. County policy states that law enforcement works a 28-day cycle. It does not match up with the county's pay cycle of the 21st to the 20th of each month. We turn in 13 timesheets during a one-year period. Doing the math, our five-day deputies for the past 11 years have worked around 140 hours each year with no compensation. Mm -hmm. Our patrol deputies have been working around 123 hours each year with no compensation. Mm -hmm. There's no salary range for experience or merit-based pay or for advanced certifications, education degrees, four years of service, which we are finding with exit interviews for people that leave us, they have no incentive to stay. Without any cost of living increases, <coughs> a six-year veteran will make the same salary as a deputy that has been employed here for six days unless that six-year veteran has received some type of promotion during this six years. <coughs> we are certainly thankful for the cost of living increase that we received last year, and we would like to keep it in proportion with inflation. Just out of this last basic law enforcement training class put on at Edgecombe Community College, I had two cadets. <coughs> ready to come to the Edgecombe County Sheriff's Office. Nash County went and did their recruitment pitch. We lost those two residents to the Nash County Sheriff's Office. Just a list of salaries of our surrounding agencies with Rocky Mountain Police Department. <coughs> Topping the list at starting at 38,000 with Edgecombe County Sheriff's Office at the bottom, our starting salary for a deputy is $30,488. And these figures came from 2018. 
our civil division. Through 2019, our civil division served, received 3,000 <coughs> child support papers received were 3,042. The civil papers that were received were 11,580. We hire retired deputies to work security in our courthouse. This keeps us from having to short staff our patrol division <coughs> by moving deputies into the courthouse. These retirees work currently for $10 an hour. We would like to see that increase. Our child support is 4D division. We learned that there were some issues to where our paper service wasn't where it needed to be. And we worked on those issues, and I think we currently have it back up to where. <coughs> We're under contract with the Department of Social Services to provide three deputies to work child support related duties. Well, according to the contract that we have, there should be a lieutenant, a sergeant, and a deputy assigned to child support. The contract states that the lieutenant should be paid $54,591. His actual salary being paid by the county, $50,583.73. According to the contract, the sergeant should be paid $46,637. He is actually being paid by the county $43,711.06. The deputy should be paid $33,377, according to the contract but is only being paid $32,747.79. Training is very important for us. The more training we receive, the better we can serve. We go above and beyond the minimum requirements set by the Sheriff's Training Standards Division. Our deputies are required to have at least 24 hours of training each year with four of those being in the concentration of firearms. Our detention officers must complete 16 hours. Our telecommunicators also must complete 16 hours. We try to provide all of our mandatory training in-house. Try to reduce travel costs. We have instructors on staff that are certified by the North Carolina Criminal Justice Training Standards We're required to have bloodborne pathogens, which is required by OSHA each year, as well as hazardous materials. We have specialized certifications such as DCI operator and toxometer operator and taser. Taser, we're required to recertify one to every three years. We go above and beyond these standards, as I've said before. And since 2018, Sheriff Atkinson has made us do some sort of <coughs> physical fitness training once a year. These are just some of the specialized instructors that we have, so we don't have to rely on the other agencies to come in and teach us what we need to know. We have an insurance <coughs> training coordinator, several firearms instructors a hazardous materials instructor, subject control and arrest techniques instructors, PT instructors, taser instructors, and we have a detention officer certification coordinator. We also partner with Edgecombe Community College, Charter Police Department, and other agencies for more specialized training. In 2019, our deputies received 2,176 hours of mandatory in-service training. Our detention officers received 832 hours. Our telecommunicators received 260 hours. As I said before, all of this mandatory training is conducted in-house. 
We went above the training, sending officers to specialized courses such as crisis intervention, investigations training, school resource officer training, and civil process and other classes. We exceeded our mandatory training hours. Ready to go. Our training center at Dodge Center at Dodge City, excuse me, reopened in February of 19. It is now fully equipped with donated equipment. It is maintained by our agency at little to no cost to the county. Its use is highly requested, and the use of the training center is traded for costly specialized training such as State Highway Patrol driver's training and high-risk tactical. This is just a list of the items that we have replaced at the training center since the last flood, and all 32 of these items were donated. Our training center consists of two classrooms, a large classroom capable of seating about 40 students and a smaller classroom capable of seating about 12. We have a canine training area. We have a shoot house. All the streets and intersections are used to conduct vehicle stop training as well as other traffic stop procedures. We have a state-of-the-art firearm training that is highly requested to be used across the state. It consists of asphalt out to the 50-yard line a berm on three sides, two static lines, 12 lanes of fire each, and is usable at the 100-yard line. Air power turning target system for 12 lanes, usable up to 40 yards. Variable speed electronic moving targets, four-station pop-up targets, a two-story shooting platform, <coughs> And a control tower with loudspeaker system and controls for turning and moving target systems. <coughs> As I had stated, it is highly requested for use. It has been used by the North Carolina State Highway Patrol, Nash County Sheriff's Office, Pitt County Sheriff's Office, Rocky Mountain Police Department, North Carolina Alcohol Law Enforcement, North Carolina Wildlife Enforcement, the Edgecombe Community College Basic Law Enforcement Training Class. National Community College based law enforcement training, the Edgecombe County 4-H, and the North Carolina <coughs> National Convention. Sheriff Axon still continues to offer DARE in Edgecombe County. It's taught in all nine elementary schools, including several schools within the city limits of Rocky Mountain and Tarleton. The Edgecombe County Sheriff's Office the only agency in Edgecombe County that offers this education. Rocky Mount Police Department, as well as the Police Department, discontinued their programs when we took over. Just in 2019, over 500 fifth graders were given this education. We have one dedicated transport officer. In 2019, we transported 1,398 state inmates, 703 federal inmates. He traveled 102,034 and a half miles. He spent 3,962 hours of his time just on transport. <laughs> Criminal Investigative Division. It consists of right now five criminal detectives. There are six positions there. We are unable to staff one of those positions due to our shortage on patrol. But they are maintaining their division, they are maintaining it well. 506 cases assigned to this division in 2019. 
313 of these cases were clear. That is a 56% clearance rate. 38 polygraphs were conducted. They investigated three homicides. All of these from 2019 <coughs> arrests have been made. They recovered $56,864 worth of property, stolen property. They saw they streamed the 13 break-ins that were targeting the Hispanic community around Battle Bowl. We have received a drone through donation, which will help us with crime scenes and searches. I mentioned the next bullet, bullet point that they are one detective short. <coughs> There's been no clothing allowance increase since 2001. Mm -hmm. The reason we chose 2001, that's the year that I was appointed to the detective. In 2001, we received $500 per year. We received a check for $250 in January and a check for $250 in July. For the past couple of years, that $500 has been split up amongst 12 months, put into their monthly paycheck, and taxed. So it has probably been reduced from $500 to about three to $350 per year because of taxes. And we'd like to be able to keep up with the times and see this amount increase. We've received some crime scene processing technology thanks to a donor. We have become part of the IBIS system, which is housed at Rocky Mountain Police Department thanks to a donor. The IBIS system is a bullet identification system. If we have any shootings that we have no suspect, but we do have evidence, <coughs> such as projectiles or shell cases, we can take them to Rocky Mountain Police Department. They enter in the, into this computer <coughs> system and if there is a, another projectile that is known to come from a certain weapon or a shell casing that is known to come from a certain weapon surfaces to the max, so we know that that bullet and shell casing came from that particular gun. Soon we will be deploying a mobile command unit provided by a donor. We have, um, our investigators are assigned to several different boards, such as CORE, the New Child Advocacy Center, Edgecombe County Sexual Assault Response Team, Edgecombe County ACES Trauma Collaborative, and the Edgecombe Community College Advisory Board. One of the staff that we lost in 2019 was a detective with our agency. He was promoted to sergeant. He left to go to Tarleton Police Department <coughs> over a high, higher staff. We have hosted numerous interns at the Sheriff's Office. These are students from universities such as North Carolina Central, UNC Pembroke, Wesleyan, and Camden. <coughs> they are placed with our detectives. And we also host high school interns and interns who are pursuing careers in law or law. The Sheriff's Office is responsible for maintaining the sex offender registry. Currently, there are 222 registered sex offenders in Edgecombe County. And we are responsible for all of those. Over 500 sex offender checks were completed 2019. These checks consist of a, of a detective going to the address where they are registered and physically seeing them there. Not taking their word that they live there, we have to be able to establish residence at that address. These checks reveal that 30 sex offenders were not living and had not upheld their end of the sex offender registry. Our narcotics division consists of three detectives. 
They initiate 87 total cases in 2019, resulting in 237 different charges. 55 arrests were made, and they still have cases and charges have not been filed. They removed 7,402 dosage units of heroin, 11 ounces of crack cocaine, 14 handguns and rifles off the streets of Edgecombe County. Their operating costs come from asset forfeiture funds. When Sheriff, office, when Sheriff Atkinson took office, we discovered that Edgecombe County was not in compliance with the rules of asset forfeiture. It took us until November of last year to become in compliance. And for this, we had to forfeit $80,000 in funds that we could have used at the Sheriff's Office. Our narcotics officers work closely with the Tar River Task Force, the North Carolina State Bureau of Investigation, North Carolina Alcohol Law Enforcement, the Drug Enforcement Administration, Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, and other local law enforcement and force multipliers. They have received surveillance equipment thanks to a dog. Animal Services. Our Animal Services Division responded to 1,537 calls for service in 2019. <laughs> We have three animal control officers. Ten of those calls were animal bodies were attacked. They're on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year for care and feeding of the animals that we house at the animal shelter. They set and check traps daily for complaints that we receive. Our ABC, pre-trial release and supervision division. We have one deputy that handles both of these duties. This is just some of the tasks that he performed in 2019. We also received $16,000 from the Edgecombe County ABC, which is 5% of their first receipts. This is set by statute. This money is received by the county, and as far as we know, not returned to the sheriff's office. The pretrial release and supervision has saved $281,400 what it would cost to house these inmates had they been placed into the detention center rather than being placed on pretrial release. Our telecommunications division, they received a total of 60,808 calls in 2019. 39,606 of those calls were for the services of the Sheriff's Office. 1,738 of those calls were within the town limits of Princeville. 1,537 calls for animal services, 18,660 EMS calls, 1,193 fire calls. It was a total of 107,243 phone calls within the communications. 22,104 of those were on 911. 58,622 incoming calls on our non-emergency and other lines, and then 26,437 outbound calls. We lost one telecommunicator in 2019. She went to our <coughs> communications in Greenwood. <coughs> PSAP stands for Public Safety Access Point, as I'm told. June 30th, 2019, according to documentation sent by the state, our fund balance should have been 
$1,165.11. We received $91,784.40 for a period from fiscal year 2018-19. $172,378.59. The emergency telephone system fund balance for July 1st, 2019, $506,470.92. We're only showing funds available of $216,470. We are unable to be told where the two hundred and ninety thousand ninety two cent is. The state's showing that it was received, but no one can tell us where that money is. <coughs> Outside of law enforcement and detention, we have a lot of programs offered within our detention center focusing on education <coughs> and rehabilitation. We also participate in many community services. This is just a list of programs that we're involved with through the Sheriff's Office. RAP, which is the Wellness Recovery Action Plan. CORE, Coordinated Opiate Recovery Effort. Day-to-Day -day DASH Program. SOAR, which is a re-entry program for the OIC, our Junior Sheriff's Academy, our Shine Citizens Academy. This will be our second year. We begin in <coughs> two weeks. Ms. Powell, Mr. Boswell, I hope you two enjoyed it, and I would love to see any of the rest of you come to us. We have a good time. Addiction Recovery Program, Project Lifesaver, a biofeedback program within our detention center, the Are You OK program <coughs> for our senior citizens, church safety presentations, community food distributions. We have deputies who volunteer their time coaching basketball, baseball, and soccer. We have an employee of the month program, which is a big morale booster around the office. We conduct active shooter training within the Edgecombe County School System. We do pre-prom presentations, but we're also active with our local Boy Scouts. We train our SROs. We receive a robot. His name is Vision. He has been well accepted by the youth in our community. We partnered with the Montrezl Herald Foundation. Our deputies came out and volunteered, our deputies and detention officers, as well as all of our staff, came out and donated their time on Thanksgiving, delivering dinners to needy people. We partnered with Michael Angel's Girls Club. We have assisted Southwest Edgecombe High School and North Edgecombe High School in upgrading the equipment in their weight rooms. Sheriff Atkinson has just implemented evaluations to our employees, which there's some argument about the last time that we had it. And most people are saying that the last evaluation that was conducted at the Sheriff's Office was 2001. Again, our pre-trial release, our ABC enforcement, and our DARE. Our motor unit consists of two donated motorcycles. We have a drone program our college intern program, and our SRO training program. This has seemed to be a big hit with the community. Lieutenant Hughes, I'm going to say probably for the past six to eight months, <coughs> has had a food truck come to the sheriff's office about once a week. And you wouldn't believe the number of non-law enforcement people that come to the sheriff's office to visit the food truck. Most of the time when people come to the sheriff's office, it's not for a very pleasant visit. <laughs> this gives the community an opportunity to come visit with us under a pleasant situation. 
in the future you will see requests for funds for many projects. One of those being much need for an animal show. Upgrades and updates in our detention center. Body cameras. Body cameras are very important in today's day and age. Just today, the sheriff received a subpoena requesting body cam footage for a use of force incident that happened back in October. We have no footage available. Our body camera program was ended back in July due to the body cameras that we had reaching end of life. Mm -hmm. And the sheriff had to make a decision between an increase in his employees' funds, raises in their salary, or body cameras. Mm -hmm. Our vehicles. We continually need vehicles. We do certainly appreciate the 22 vehicles that were purchased back in 2018. All of them have been put to good use. But <coughs> with the loan payment coming out of the capital outlay for those 22 vehicles for about the next three to four years, that leaves us very little room to continue to add to our tool. Our firearms that we currently carry are at least 15 years old. We train with these weapons twice a year. We fire these weapons a lot. We have replaced just about as many parts as we can replace. So we will, we will be requesting new firearms, and it can be at a reduced cost if our employees are allowed to purchase the firearms that they currently <coughs> Our 800 megahertz radios, these have been in operation for some time and they are near reaching into life as well. We have been told that in a few years, the radios that we currently carry will not operate on a new system. Our animal shelter. We continue to get feedback from each and every inspection that's conducted at the animal shelter for substandard conditions. We work well with our county maintenance department, but there's only so much that you can do. Some of the complaints that the inspector has that the air temps are too high in the summer. There's lack of space for the animals and storage. There are security issues. It looks bad to prospective adopters and all visitors and we have to rely on volunteers to do a lot of our work. You don't only have to put them in control. Our detention center, the facilities begin to show us age. The inmates are able to open some of the cell doors. The steam kettle in the kitchen, the oven in the kitchen need replacement. We need a washer and a dryer, and our current budget does not allow for these purchases. At the moment, our jail annex is unusual due to black it could not be staffed if it was operational due to our staffing issues. Our detention center control panel has recently been replaced. Uh, there were funds set aside in last year's budget for this project. For some reason it didn't go through. We had to dip into this year's budget to complete. The facility requires constant, constant maintenance, and as I said, we work well with our maintenance department. We would like to see one person full-time on the Sheriff's Office staff for maintenance, and it would be great if this person could also be certified as a professional. Picture to the left of the screen is the old control panel that was well beyond needing replacement. To the right is the new state-of-the-art door control system. As I said, <coughs> we have a big need for body cameras. When we did have body cameras, we settled a lot of complaints and settled quickly. We, we were able to review the footage 
This is a photograph of one of our patrol vehicles that was shot on New Year's Eve. We're not sure if this was a straight bullet or if it was intentional. <coughs> We're hoping that it was a straight. But this is another one of the dangers that we face <coughs> daily in law enforcement. And I'll now ask the driver that vehicle to come forward. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm going to hold you guys long. That is me. I'm not immune to danger. I'm sitting in my house New Year's night and I'm praying for my deputies that they're going to be safe and I'm hearing them on the radio going to gunfire. And normally I'm in the truck. And I get up to work the next day and I prayed all night long making sure our guys was okay. Took my truck to the sheriff and did a ship. The sheriff, who you been in the gunfight with? Nobody. When I come to the truck, it's bullet holes in the truck. If it goes up, it's got to come, come down. We do a dangerous job. I thank you guys. <coughs> Chairman, board, county manager, I need your help. I need your help to protect the citizens of Edgecombe County and keep them safe. Citizens, I need your help. I've been on the front lines of being the best trained. I know what it is. I've had the salaries. These families need relief. They're retiring at low wages. They are fighting. I'm watching women back there fight men. Some men that I won't even fight. And I've got some strong sisters back there in that jail. I need your help. That's it. I'm not up here to go back and forth. It's not what I'm up here for. I need immediate relief to keep well-trained people to protect these folk out here. That's what I need. The quicker I train them, the quicker they're coming to get them. Hmm. And I know what we're saying. And I'm going to relieve some time because I know people's got to get home. I get it. And there's people going to say, every division they're leaving, Sheriff, I hear it all the time. They're leaving all over the place. But when you lose law enforcement, hmm. when you lose law enforcement, and i got to send a baby to your house to respond, versus a 10-year veteran, we got issues. Mm -hmm. That's when you come into play, sir. That's when, the law, that's when the lawsuits come into play. Because I can't keep that 8- to 10-year person because now I got a less than a one-year person going to your home. Same thing for my detention facility. We've got to keep expanding. They want to stay here. I need your help. That's it. Regardless of the phone calls people call and <coughs> they call you today, they call you yesterday. Listen, that's not that's not even my demeanor. My demeanor is begging you guys for relief. That's it. We are the leadership of Edgecombe County. <coughs> People put us in place to protect them. Do you not? Yes. yes. So my voice is for them. <coughs> Captain Watts, can I see that tray, sir? And I'm going to sit down and Mark, you come toward me. Can I see this tray? You see, guys, when we're battling, you can't even feed these guys on trays. 
then they're cutting them apart. And now we got to look at rubber trays back in our detention facility <coughs> to make sure our staff is straight and safe and make sure the inmates are safe. These guys were so smart to cut trays apart. So now we got to start thinking ahead of them. And they use these to make weapons. That's how dangerous this stuff is. They use these to make weapons. And then the next thing you know, detention staff is unaware of what's going on. And we've got we've to send deputies and the detention staff in there to do a shakedown to find these, these things. It's constant. There is a new inmate now. It's not like old school days when we can staff the detention facility like we used to. We're dealing with some smart and aggressive inmates, and they're young. Hmm. That's what we're battling. And this is why, here you go, Captain. We're good, sir. This is why I need your help. That's it. I understand the decisions you guys have to make. I get it. Lord knows I get it. But guess what? I'm tired. But I continue fighting for them. Because I see what's in their, their mind. And I see they want to give up. And I see the industry that's coming. We've lost a couple of the corning already. I love the industry. But we can't even compete with a plant that ain't even been started hiring. Mm. They anyway, started hiring. They got a couple of my people. Mm. And what better person would you like to employ than people who's been, been, they know how to work in enclosed environments? That's detention staff. That's who they're coming after. So I'm losing them. And we've got to keep the worst of the worst. And if I don't have staff, we're in trouble. I need your help. That's it. That's it. I get it. I understand. I need your help, sir. I get it. But we're fighting like every day trying to keep quality staff in his home county. And when you lose law enforcement, attention staff, and office staff, it sets us back. It, 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 it creates an environment. And my job is to keep all these citizens safe. That is it. And when I got skilled people that I'm training, next month all of my staff got to fight me. That's unheard of. That's why they're getting in shape. Because I got to look down their eyes and see how bad they want this. See how bad can they protect themselves when I'm laying in the bed at 2 in the morning. That's why they got to fight me. So I can see for myself what kind of product is in East Stone County going to your home. This is valuable. I appreciate your time. Uh, I know we got a lot to cover. I need y'all. I need y'all to protect them. And with that, if I, if I get what I need, we can continue to protect them by keeping qualified people that are homegrown right here in Stone County. That's all. That's all I'm asking for. We need relief because it's disheartening. It's frustrating. And I feel their pain. I have seen better. Help us, please. Because it's not getting any better. Help us, please. I'm going to yield to uh, one of my deputies right here, Mark Silver. Thank you guys so much. Mr. Chairman, Council members, thank you, Sheriff, for allowing me this opportunity to speak. Brief history I retired from the State Highway Patrol after 25 years of service. I'm a longtime resident of Edgecombe County. I've never left. I live on Green Pasture Road, 3009 Green Pasture Road, in Rocky Mount Address. Still becoming a member of the Sheriff's Department, which I'm honored that Sheriff had gave me an opportunity. I have developed a newfound respect for each one of these deputies and what they go through each day. The men and women of the Sheriff's Department I extend the work that they do, the extent of the work that they do, and what they're day in and day out. The sentiment includes the sworn officer, the detention officers, the civilian staff as well. You will not find a more professional and dedicated staff of the great 100 counties of this great state. I had discerned this information because of the mediocre pay they received. A top paid trooper at eight years is going to make $65,000 within eight years. I retired as a district first sergeant with the State Highway Patrol of Halifax and North Kansas counties. I'm responsible for 21 men. My base salary is responsible for 21 men, and I don't mind saying it, $82,100. Mm. Wow. Mm. District First Sergeant now making $89,000. I'm telling you, you've got to provide for these men and women. 
I didn't realize the extent that these deputies are working second jobs. Ball games, grocery store, KFC, just to make ends meet. These guys are not even able to provide food for their families, let alone luxuries. I implore you to get to know these men and women. Spend the shift observing the patrol deputy, <coughs> spend the shift in the detention center, and you'll see what they go through each day in the mediocre pay they receive. You will value the work that they do and the risk they take each day. Protect each and every one of us and the citizens of this county. It will definitely open your eyes and your hearts. I've had several family members, judicial officials, members of the lay community, wouldn't even do the work on their salary, let alone ours. Hmm. I've known Sheriff Atkinson for over 20 years. He's like a brother to me. You will not find a more dedicated and caring sheriff for the members of this county, for the members of his staff. I beg you, implore you, for all your support behind this sheriff and this staff, both financially and figuratively, because they're here for all of us. Thank you for your time. I'll speak. Um, I think we do value uh, uh, our department and our officers. And we, we do understand and we will give everything that we've heard consideration. Um, and I also have to give some understanding to you all as taxpayers and we hear what you're requesting uh, and things that we have to look at to honor some of those requests. Okay. And, and I think this board is willing to, to take that on. So my commitment is that we will certainly look at some of these requests and we will charge our, our management team to certainly take a very serious look at it and even while this board might have the authority to override the, the, the management team, but the management team brings back to us what a budget would say. And this board has to look at the budget and make determinations in terms of where the revenue is coming from. And we will do that. We certainly will do that. We, we hear you. We hear you. That's all I can say. Any other comments from the board? Hearing none. Thank you for this education, okay, it's an education to, to us in terms of the presentation that you have given to this board. It opens our eyes on some things. So I just thank all of you and all of you for supporting the sheriff. We're glad to see you again. Uh, we brought in the public petition, sir, and if you've got something again, I'll bring it in on public petition, okay? Right now, this was, uh, uh, this was a scheduled appointment So we've heard from the sheriff. If there's anybody that wants to come, the next scheduled item will be public petitioners. If anybody would like to come and speak, is it all shared from your office? Thank you, thank you, Chairman and the board. Thank you so much. Sir. Okay, well, thank you so much for the presentation. At this time, we will move into the next um, agenda item, and that is public petitions. If there's anybody here to speak, please come forward and stick your name and address for the public record. Does anybody speak? This is the time that you can come up, sir. Go ahead. Excuse me, I'll stop you again. That, let's, the people that want to leave, go ahead. 
And I'm just concerned. I'm, 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 while he's at work, I'm, I'm constantly praying because of what they have to face there. He, he's in the midst of murders and all type of, of, of crimes uh, that have been committed by these you know, inmates. His safety, um, his mental state, their mental state. And I'm not just talking about my husband, all of those officers. They have a dangerous job. And, and the pay is just not, it just don't get paid enough. And it's hard on the families. Uh, I've even had to come out of a, um, I have a dis disabling health issue. And I had to go to work just to make ends meet. And it's hard. They need your help. They're overworked, underpaid. Um, their safety is at danger every, I mean, every day they go to work. They don't know what they're going to run into from each day to day. The morale can get low. Um, and it's just a dangerous job that they have. And I'm here tonight just to stand on behalf, not just my husband, but all those awesome officers that go in every day and they're surrounded by criminals. So I'm begging. They need help. <coughs> Families need help and support. And as the gentleman said, it's going to get worse. Our communities depend on, on, on these guys. Families, we, we need help. <coughs> I'm, I'm just concerned. I mean, I spend most of my time praying for all their safety. I've seen, I see what my husband goes through when he gets off of work, he comes home, he don't say anything. Even tonight he said, don't say certain things, but I can't. Because if it concerns him, it concerns me, it bothers me. And all these officers, they deserve much better than what they're getting. So I, I urge you all to help this office, these great men and women that go in day in and day out amongst criminals. Dangerous work. And I've, I've heard so many times of, uh, of statistics talking about Edgecombe County, the poverty in Edgecombe County. I don't believe that. I believe we're greater and better than that. Hmm. We can do better. Pay these men and women what they deserve. Pay them so that they can better protect us the county, the community. They deserve it. Thank you for your time. Thank you, ma'am. Fifteen dogs that somebody's in the hospital dying. Do you know how many dogs our shelter can hold? Twenty. So if we had one person that had fifteen dogs, and we already had strays in the building on stray hold, we have nowhere for those dogs to go. And it is not right for animal services to have to euthanize a dog after <coughs> seventy-two hours just because there's nowhere to put it. Not when they're healthy, adoptable dogs. It's just not acceptable. The shelter's running a spay dinner program. It's um, kind of a private grant that we were able to get. In three or four days, we've already scheduled over 30 surgeries. People want to get their animals fixed, so we're trying everything we can to get it done. The shelter does multiple rabies clinics a year. I can't remember how many rabies vaccines Eugene gave last year, but I think it was around six or 700. Um, and just on my end of that, when you have people that work for your sheriff's office that are on public assistance because they don't make enough money <coughs> to support their families, there's really something wrong. That is sad. So please consider their salaries. I've looked online, I don't see any pay scales, but, but to know that there are people out there on the streets protecting us that are having to get public assistance because they're not getting paid enough by the county that they're trying to protect, that's just not acceptable. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you for your time. My name is Brian Holland. I live at uh, 1736 Pine Talks Road, Pine 
Brian talked to Ashley Chris community. But on the morning of January 8th, uh, approximately 4 a.m., I got to work between 2 and 4 a.m. in the morning. I came out my front door to get in my vehicle, and my road is Pine Top Chris Road. The road beside me is Sunset <coughs> Road. There was a car. He wasn't sitting directly like he was going to turn left or right. He <coughs> had his lights angled towards my utility belt. When I went out to warm my truck up, I just felt uncomfortable. To make a long story short, I called the sheriff's department, and within three minutes, there was an Edgecombe County deputy in my yard. Uh, I just want to say, since uh, Sheriff Axton took office, I've noticed uh, a lot of good things in the community. I was born and raised in Nash County. I've been in Edgecombe County for <coughs> 25, 26 years. Um, I think the money that these men and women make protecting us is absolutely ridiculous. I currently have family members that work for Nash County Sheriff's Office, and it's just absolutely ridiculous what these men and women do. The things they face, uh, the drugs, um, the people they have to deal with, the type of people they have to deal with, the things they deal with, the things that the the gentleman presented tonight is, I just think it's ridiculous for those men and women to work under the conditions that they work under for what they get paid for. And I would ask you to consider paying them what they deserve. And thank you for your time. Excuse me, Sheriff Jackson. I'm not coming as an employee of the Sheriff's Office. I'm coming as a citizen. I've been in the detention center for almost 18 months now. I have 31 years of correction experience. I retired as a correctional administrator. When I retired, I would probably make more money than the sheriff is making now. I've worked at large facilities. i worked at small facilities. I've seen all sorts of staff. I've had to manage teenagers. I've had to manage adults. Working at this detention center has really done something to me. I had an employee come to me, said that he was leaving, going to his pointing point. And right then I knew that I had a problem. I've had sleepless nights since then trying to figure out how am I going to maintain quality staff and recruit staff to protect the citizens of this county and to protect the visitors of that detention center and the staff that work there day in and day out. Dealing with violent offenders, gang members who feel like they can do what they want to do when they want to do it, and our staff have to maintain control of those offenders. We lock them behind a door. As soon as staff leaves out, they're able to manipulate the doors and open them up. I got a staff that has to make round twice an hour in those pods. I got female staff having to do that. What if they pop those doors, manipulate those doors when our staff are walking down those corners at night and pull them in the cell and do God knows what to them? We have to do something. Or we're going to be like the situation that had in Elizabeth City. Because staff weren't trained. Because staff weren't as if they were overworked. And look at the lawsuit they're facing. You pay now or pay later. Hmm. What you going to do? I expect for them to maintain security and control of those women. I expect for them to make rounds twice an hour as required by the state. And if they don't, we have to deal with it. We just did four corrective action plans because they did not make rounds according to policy. I didn't want to do it, but I have to. Because I realize they're underpaid and overworked. We are not about nine, eight positions short now, five pending. One going to the fire department, possibly couple going to corner. And I told this, I told my corporate that came here and told me he was leaving. 
I said, look, do me a favor. Keep this on your hat. I didn't want him spreading that because I know the rest of them going to follow suit. If I can go and make $14 an hour and not having the stress, not working in a hostile environment, what am I going to do? Hmm. What happens when they leave? Then if five or six leave, I got 13 openings. That means I got staff that's there being overworked because we're short of staff. <coughs> we got to do something. We, our revenue for the jail a year is over, the potential is over a million dollars. What the sheriff deputy and those guys bring in revenue. It's very easy. I realize you all got to take care of the rest of the county too. Hmm. But the sheriff office needs to be considered. We get 10%, they get 2%. You justify it by look at what the, the sheriff office revenue bring in. They protect me. I've been in the system with did that many years. DPS public safety always got with the state always got more than everybody else got because they protect the public. It's just a fire. You gotta want to do it. You gotta understand what our staff are going through. And if you put, want to say you working for the public, then you gotta look out for them in every area. And it's your own responsibility to sit down and come up with a plan to say that we gotta give it these. Sheriff, this sheriff off more money to continue to protect this great county. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Hello, everybody. My name is Ray Hines, and I live at 304 Curl Street in Tarboro, and I'm a detention officer at the detention center. I'm going to give you a little insight from the inside looking out. Everybody probably feels like, yeah, we're well, we trying to show what we're talking about money. But it's not about money. It's about love, honor, and respect that we have for each other. A lot of times we have to go through a lot of stuff that we can't even talk about. When you walk here first, you might go home to your little one and say, hey, honey, how was your day? And you can discuss what goes on. We can't do that. Because we are legally bounded by a lot of this stuff. We can't even discuss it. So we can't, we got to keep this stuff bottled up. Whatever issue you got at home, you got to leave that down and pick it up when you get back home. <coughs> you can get caught slipping the easier your life to be snuffed out. We do it because we care. It's our community, and we share our love for our one another, for our brothers and sisters. And no matter what we're going through, if I get up a lot of times, I don't feel like coming in. I feel like I can do better. And I do have degrees I can do better. But if I do that, I let my brothers and my sisters down. Hmm. I broke my chain. And I honor them enough that I got to go through the fight with them. I can't let the fallen soldier fall and I don't get it to help them. So what I do, when I do get up, I say, yeah, I got to stand with them. If one of us go down, we all go down together. We're not going to let them soldier fall and not be there for them. We're going to support them and be there the way we should be. Because this is my family, just as much as the family I was born in. And you're born in your family, so whatever that happens, you get. But you choose your friends. So I can't not deny them the love that I have for them. And I just got to go for it and continue to do so. Because whatever happens, we're going to do this together. And it's about this. We do it not only because we care and it's our community, but I can speak for real for myself and the rest of the when I say this. One other thing we do get out of this, no matter whatever the trenches we're going in and the stuff we go through, we were walking up high and you see that one little individual with that light in their eye and you know that you have touched them in some way to change them, it makes it all feel like it's not worth the thing. Hmm. We have saved one. We will go through the trenches for that one that we have to do. <coughs> because if you are part of this problem, if you can talk about it all you want, but if you're not going to give them alternative things to do or other solutions to change it, then you just as much as a part of the problem mm -hmm. as We have to stand fast and take that way right to our, this our community. And we're going to stand there and do it for you. Right now. <laughs> Shane Bonnell, uh, 4186 Pleasant View Road. Welcome out. Um, well, changes the gears a little bit, but not, but not too quick, Mr. Chair and board members. I want to reiterate 
everything that everybody has said here about the sheriff's department. Um, I know Sheriff Clee personally, and since he's come here, I can tell you things have not going to change. And if we lose him, then we're going to be at a great loss. It's bad enough out there as it is. Um, I farm. Um, there's times that I have to call them, have rental property, have to call them the sheriff's department. And I can tell you that it has been a change since Sheriff Clee's taken over. And uh, I know, you, <coughs> Mr. Chair, you mentioned about the budget, and you have to go back and look at the budget. Well, if you ain't got nobody to protect the budget, they won't come get your budget. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So <coughs> sometimes we have to be in that budget to make it work. And we don't need to keep losing these experienced officers. Okay, thank you. Uh, <coughs> change of gears. The reason I'm here on behalf of, uh, as president of the Farm Bureau, um, I came up and spoke in a decent meeting about the, uh, the ban on tobacco use. And in the January meeting, we found out it was overturned. Um, we thought we had an understanding that this issue was going to be reiterated and there were going to still be specific places that were <coughs> designated for smoking. Um, we felt like that y'all would give that thought that a total ban on all property was not feasible. Um, the detention center and the jail is county property. You want to tell me you're going to stop those inmates from smoking? You can't police it. The inmates don't smoke down there. They don't? No, sir. Well, other properties like the, the, uh, the land fields here, you know, the administrative deal is fine. We need a we need a, a, a smoking designated spot, some some type of compromise. You know, when you go to the landfill or dump trash dump, these are places that, you know, how how are you how are you gonna police that? You know, we're asking these these guys here, we're talking about it underpaid and overworked, and we're putting one more law on that they got enforced. That this it's not enforced. Um, in saying that, we feel that it was voted on in one day and then turned around and voted on again without a public hearing or any public forum. Uh, I don't. I think we had recess there. How did we do that? <coughs> it was two separate hearings. Two separate hearings. The hearing last month was. And we, really and we came back at the second meeting and we voted a public hearing. Different, and we did do it on this public notice. So, is that the requirement? Is that correct? Yes, but you are right in terms of uh, it was something different. So, I'm going to ask the board to speak on, on uh, any members that might want to speak on that because there were some changes, as you stated. Um, and there was a change of some of these members in the terms of the way they voted. Okay. Hmm. Um, but I'm going to ask those, you know, of those that would like to speak to them, because some of us supported the position that was initially came to us, and some did not. There was a change. If anybody from the board would like to speak, you can, but you do not have to. But I, I, I follow your point. Uh, but as it stands now, the ordinance is no smoking on county owned property, is that correct? Yes, or lease property. Yes, sir. So how are we going to enforce it at the, at the uh, county landfill? I can't tell you. Okay? Because so the employees there will tell them no smoking. Okay? <laughs> or it will be signage or, or that. But um, that's just the way I can explain it according to what the ordinance says. Well, this has been turned over twice. We would ask y'all to revisit that and, I and give us some consideration. I, and I am saying that as a proper request. Uh, is it a time frame for our ordinance that we can do this? Is it a time frame you come back? Just the fact that for the ordinance to be amended again, that would be another public meeting. Uh, if you would give me the manager, if it, it can be put back, uh, it can be put back on the agenda item. I don't know what the position of the board feels, but I think a citizen or, a, or your organization can request that. And if you get with the, the manager, and, and he will he will 
put it on the agenda. Is that correct? Am I, am I doing that correct? If you, the board will need to call for the public hearing if you're going to consider a change. Well, you need to bring it to us. Okay. Is that, is that, a, is that your request now? Yes, sir, it is. We don't usually make a request. We use a simple fact. We don't usually let and make that kind of request. Have we, have we in the last? Not that a citizen come up. It's something that has, has come through the administration. So that would not be at this meeting. If you put it on the next agenda, we can make put that request on the next agenda and call for that public hearing. That's the way we have previously done it. Am I incorrect? Since I've been here, yes, sir. That's true. If you make that request again, sir, that would be done. Thanks, sir. We can vote on it again. We can vote on it. We, we vote on it. This board, we don't know. I'm not saying that we'd be subject to change. They, they, they remember the following when they asked us to be considered. And I think we have a responsibility to be considered. I do. But I would take board direction on that if there's anybody that wants to speak on it. I think we've already voted twice. Any other? Is there anybody else? Since I'm only hearing from one, we voted twice, that means we can vote a third time. I'm not here from the majority of the board. And the majority of the board, if the majority of the board is saying it's done, it is, if the same members that voted on it speak now, we have a position. I voted the same way with all votes. Anybody else to speak? Now, if the other members want to change their vote a third time, then speak up. appears to be the majority. If we put it on the agenda, we appear to have already have a position on that show. And that is that they want us to stay as it is. But I'm still not saying it should not be on the agenda because I don't think we can we as a board can prevent, <coughs> can prevent citizen participation in that report. Would you put it back? I take correct I'm not speaking for the board, I'm speaking on it. And I'll take Direction from the attorney or the manager. Well, sir, we can bring back before you at your next meeting consideration to call for a public hearing. That's what you bring. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Excuse me. Okay. Um, <coughs> Tom Porter, 3930 Meadowbrook Road, Rocky Mountain. Um, I have just come off as president from Farm Bureau Board for 15 years, and I was not at the meeting in December because that. And um, <coughs> it troubles me that we came in and talked about this and, and it was voted on. And at the next meeting, unbeknownst to any of us, there was people that came in and spoke differently and, and swayed the thing the other way without Maybe I guess the, the, the proper notification was there, but it didn't get to us. Since then, since then, we had decided we would come back and ask for an explanation. At three o'clock this afternoon, my phone rang, and I got my explanation. One of the county health board members called me and said, "Can you explain?" your side of this to me and I said absolutely I explained my side I said would you explain your side to me and he said absolutely and what we got out of that was that our two groups should meet together and see if we can compromise on this and bring something to you we had no idea where this was coming from we know it now but we didn't know it then so we're asking can the two groups come together if they're willing to and come back at the next meeting with a compromise? Well, I believe it's an excellent suggestion. I think I think this started with Human Service Board. Is that correct? That's correct. It came with a recommendation. It came with a recommendation from our Human Service Board. Right. But why don't I think it's an excellent suggestion? So let, let me just say one more thing before you take off. In my 15 years, it's probably been my dropping the ball. I used to come to all the meetings, but there was very little work done in the agriculture community with the commission. Some things we did work on, but we got things done. 
I got lax and not coming to the meeting. I didn't know this was coming up, so I dropped the ball on this. Um, but what I would like to come out of this, however the vote happens, is for the committee, the, com the commissioners to be able to come to the Farm Bureau Board when there is something that deals with farming and talk to us and let us help you through that so that we can come to decisions together in the community is what we would ask. And this is a good start. Well, I'm going to um, kind of throw this back at you in terms of uh, or if there's something that impacts the farmers, I'm going to ask that the staff at least inform the form you of the potential for changes because I'm I don't think all of us are gonna all of us cannot come to your meeting. So okay. I'm, I'm not asking I'm not asking that I'm just saying let us know what's going on. And I, we're not at every meeting and let us help. You know, you don't know everything about farming. Okay. We don't know everything about running the county. But if we work together mm -hmm. we can make decisions that don't cause people to be upset. Well, I, we're going to make some decisions that people don't disagree with. Part of what we, the, you know, part of, that's the reason that we are uh, we are here, and sometimes we might not be popular. Um, I've been here over 20 years, and it's um, but it's important. This change came about because advocacy groups got involved <coughs> and came here and asked this board. First it was the farmers and then it was the, the, the health the, 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 the public health community that asked us. And as a result of this, this board made a decision. And according to what I'm hearing, it went through the legal process, the process that we required. <coughs> I would hope that the farmers and the and the and the health community could come to us um, with um, something that they could agree with. But even if you don't agree we've got to make a decision, okay? And if we, if we could come up with something that you could recommend, that, that they could recommend to this board and that this board might buy, I certainly think it's a good idea. So I'm asking you to do the, um, Mr. Evans, to make sure that tie them in with our next meeting, Mr. Johnson, and let them talk to the uh, uh, our health service, human services board and see if there's a willingness there to propose something. Okay, and if they might not, but they need to have that opportunity. Uh, I, I think that we, we can make that happen. You, you've got the information you need. Okay. We're, we're, oh, yes, sir. Is anybody else to speak? Uh, my name is Holton Woodard. I live at 505 Lincoln Road in Chicago. And I come to you as a member of the Human Services Board and also the uh, Health Department Advisory Board and the DSS Advisory Board. Uh, our major concern is the health of this community. And it's not against the violence. It's for the health of the community. And I'm not sure how this became a tobacco issue. It became an issue where we feel very strongly that we need to improve the health of our citizens in Edgecombe County. We get statistics every year that indicate that we are 99 or 98 at the bottom of the health of our entire community in Edgecombe County. And that's why we feel like we're very strong that we, we need to try to do something about smoking in the community. Everybody seems to know if there are no statistics, uh, we're higher for cancer, high rate of health, health uh, heart problems, high blood pressure, and I've just read something recently about a couple weeks ago that 30% of the cancer rate went down because smoking has gone down. So it has to do about smoking. I also have been a smoker in my career, and my wife as well. And I'll show you that if people want to smoke, they're going to smoke. But what we're saying is an example to others, and then we're joining the hospital and many other agencies, as a matter of fact, other cities across the state, and trying to get <coughs> smoking and count it in the public building. We're all going to do that at the city. You can't smoke in uh, the city property or in the city building or vehicles. People will adjust. People will get upset. But it's not trying to do anything at home to farmers. We're not doing that. 
they can still produce the product. We're not outlawing tobacco. What we're trying to do is provide another avenue for our students to be healthy. I would also uh, urge the commissioners to give incentives for people, uh, health incentives for people who do stop smoking. We do that for weight. Let's do that for smoking. Uh, I'm sorry that um, the farmers feel like this is an attack on their profits and their product. It's not. We are not against something. We are for something. We are for the health of our community. We have to do something to age on County. These statistics, the reason why I'm on the health of our survival board, the reason why I'm on the Human Services Board is because year after year for the last 20 years or more, our public health in age on County is down. I would like to commend the commissioners and the state for bringing new jobs. That should help. People will have health, health uh, uh, insurance, and that will help our entire community. <clears throat> but we have to have a healthy workforce. And one of the ways, sure, statistics show, I don't know what you look at, one of the most important things is stopping people from smoking. Now, we can't stop people from smoking, but we can also say this is a safe haven. Now, people are going to smoke when they get home. And I'll show you, my wife, she worked at uh, Mary, Mary Francis. When they stopped them from smoking there, she stopped smoking there. But they didn't stop them from smoking at home. So we're not saying don't smoke. We're saying don't smoke on the county property. And this was also a recommendation from the state. And we adopted it because we feel very strong that we, as a, as a uh, committee, we have to lead our community in, in health issues. And we're hoping that you all will respect our recommendation when we bring it to you. You don't have to always agree with understanding the other issues to consider. But this is very important to the overall health of the Thank you. And is there anybody to speak? Hearing none, the public petition. We move on to the next item. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, I do want to point out a couple of those. So you'll see number one, and they are numbered on the top right corner of the budget. I do want to point out that this is uh, reallocating some sort of school shares, so all this capital allocation. For the deer one to the area. Right, right. Yeah. Um, the survey, not to totally the sheriff not We felt like just a way to help some body cameras the sheriff's office. That's right. body cameras like five years ago, five years ago, and they're already out of date. I believe that's what the chair is. I thought he asked that question. And that was what they granted. Sure. Sure, have a question. So he won't listen now. Yes, sir. Sheriff, did we not buy some body cams about five years ago? In their life cycle, it was five years or less. Yes, sir. And what had happened was uh, we started to see, uh, it's a good question, Commissioner, we started to see what the, those uh, were kind of on the low end. And we were not able to see the footage as well. And so when we did get uh, a request from an attorney or what have you, I mean, just kind of let you do the third out and just so they still work, they're just not up, up to the standard we need. That, exactly right. Okay. End of life, and myself and uh, uh, Mr. Evans, we've been in contact, uh, myself, Mr. Evans, and uh, Axon representatives have been in contact. So uh, I, I'm pleased to say that we're working towards that goal. That's two hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars that we're about to approve. I thought it was. It was two seventy, two seventy-four. No, sir. That, that's that's the current budget. How many we're we're moving thirteen thousand. So it's just thir it's the thirteen thousand dollars will buy thirty cameras. So we don't. So how many cameras do we need? Sixty. We got sixty deputies. I make a motion that we approve twenty-six thousand dollars. So um, we're going to do the thirteen, and I and I make so a motion we approve thirteen more thousand dollars for the general fund. To the earmark for the, 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 the first time we've had We want to be transparent as possible and act on so you guys know it's the clearest camera, camera uh, uh, body cam that's out. And uh, I just got to believe the same commission rather than go putting new money to old stuff. Oh, oh yes, Mr. Sure. Is it, sir? 
Oh, All in favor of that, we don't like Rosetta. Uh, Before you lose that, go thank ahead. you. You don't mess around and talk to the board. It's time to be quiet. I'm, I'm we'll see you down here. We'll see you next week. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. You're exactly right. Thank you. Yeah, anybody else? Uh, anything else? Uh, I'll point out number eight, uh, budget amendment number eight. You'll remember a couple months ago reported because of the uh, good hard work that uh, our staff was doing and our DMV, our LPA office downstairs, um, we received some bonus funds. So I just wanted to point out to you that this budget amendment is to appropriate the receipt of those bonus funds, $5,400 to, the, uh, to, the, uh, to that office. Um, you do have, uh, let me make sure there weren't any more of them. We've got two on Yes, sir. You do have two uh, two more that um, I came across my desk since I put the agenda pack together. Uh, you'll see the one for um, the planning inspections office is fairly routine. Um, budget amendment moving between line items within the uh, department. Um, also for uh, emergency services, that is a, again moving funds um, within that office uh, line items. I do want to point out uh, we've had some discussion earlier about um, uh, Medicaid cost settlement and the report that has to be done, particularly for rescue services. So this money primarily is being moved uh, for a contract that we're going to do uh, for someone to. Um, do those reports for us. Hopefully that will, will help us to improve um, uh, what we receive in that day cost of it for uh, the rest of the uh, That's all the ones I wanted to point out, but certainly I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Motion to approve. We got a motion? Second. Question. All in favor, let me know my vote sign aye. All opposed? Aye. Karen Dunn is approved. That's B. Uh, for item B, um, uh, presented for your consideration is a resolution from the League of Women Voters Twin Counties. This resolution recognizes the 100th anniversary of the passage of the 19th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution that gave women the right to vote. Uh, I believe we do have a representative here tonight. Thank you for coming back. Um, and I do recommend that you approve the resolution. Would you like to come in? Yes, thank you. I'm Melanie Goff Bradley, and I'm the president of the League of Women Voters of Twin Counties, uh, 875 Powell Road, Rocky Mountain. Um, I repeat uh, that I appreciate that you uh, heard me last month. I'm not going to repeat myself, but for those who may not know, 100-year um, birthday is a great opportunity uh, most of the time for celebration, but this resolution is a commemoration only because um, we are in somber recognition of the fact that here in North Carolina, the General Assembly did not ratify the 19th Amendment in 1920, 100 years ago, and in fact worked with other states <coughs> to prevent the passage of the amendment and kept suppressive laws on the books against women and did not ratify the 19th Amendment in 1930 or 1940 or even 1960. But only in 1971, less than 50 years ago, did the North Carolina General Assembly ratify the 19th Amendment. Now, we have had more years with Super Bowls than we have had voting rights for women and ratification of the 19th Amendment in the North Carolina General Assembly. Uh, but we can change the past. We can take a step to the future. And I appreciate you. Uh, adopting this resolution, commemorating 100 years of voting rights and 100 years of the League of Women Voters. Thank you. And we have a copy of the resolution. Now, ten to five, is there a motion? Move. Any questions? All in favor, let me know by the vote sign aye. Aye. All opposed? Hearing none. It is approved. Thank you. We usually have the, we 
sign this, but she gets another one, right? Ms. Harris, since you are a woman and it's legal women vote, I think I need to do why don't we let some, Why don't we let somebody else take it and let Ms. Harris be in this stuff here? Mr. Thompson will get She wants to be in both pictures of King. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, please. And please, Mr. Commissioner. I'm going. You're going to let the women. Can't hold on to that. Thank you. 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 Thank Any questions from the board? Okay, now raise your hand, Ms. Rogers. Ms. Ms. Rogers, you all to hook, no questions. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
before you an amendment to the contract with SNME Incorporated for professional services related to the uh, Crestfield's 53-acre development. Um, and you'll see there's detail there in my memo as well as the uh, proposed change order, the, the need for this change order. Uh, this will result in the addition of uh, $70,963.75, increasing the total contract price to two sixty two. 663.75, which is an eligible cost under the North Carolina DRA grant that we have. So I recommend that you approve the amendment as presented. One, one question before we do it. Yes, sir. We, we have complete, complete control over what we do with this. In other words, we, Prince has approved of us making these changes. Has Prince Board acted on? This or do they have to? The board does not have to act on this change order because we that are the holders of the grant. We hold the contract. Okay. Now I do. That does bring up a good point. I do want to note uh, that SME has completed the process of developing the site plan for the 53 acres. And as you remember, uh, our role was not to approve the plan to leave that to the town. The town that has been presented to the town, and they have voted to approve. This is close to do. Yes, sir. This is some additional work <coughs> to that project. Motion. Motion and a second question. All in favor, let me know by the vote. Aye. Aye. All opposed. Hearing none, it is approved. Um, consider approval of change in funding appropriate to Brazil Memorial Library. You see it in your package. It's a, it's a reduction in appropriation. Is there a motion? Second. It moved in second questions. All in favor, let it be known by the vote. Aye. Aye. All opposed. Hearing none, it is approved. Uh, U.S. Census Bureau has asked us in the past to uh, other units of local government to appoint a uh, census liaison. You had previously uh, taken action to appoint Ms. Cynthia Jones, uh, our planning director, uh, in that uh, in that role. As you are probably aware, Ms. Jones has recently accepted a position with the City of Rocky Mount and uh, will be ending her tenure with us on this month. So. I recommend that you appoint Ms. Bettina Braswell, who is our senior planner, as the 2020 census liaison. Ms. Ms. Braswell please, is here. Please stand. Motion like to, uh, <coughs> to approve. Second. Please. All in favor, let be known by the vote and sign aye. Aye. All opposed, hearing none, she is appointed. Uh, I'd also like to uh, to announce to the board as well as to the public that Ms. Braswell uh, will serve as our interim planning director uh, during the time which we have you announced that Ms. Jones will be leaving? I just said it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a great member. And I do want to. I thought you were replaced the while you were here. <laughs> and I do want to thank Ms. Jones for her service to the county. We, we kind of also like to thank you. Thank you. All right. We hate to see her go, but we congratulate her. Sorry, her. sorry, <laughs> sorry that she go. And I said, oops, I can't agree. Sorry to see you um, a constraint approval of change in mileage reimbursement rate. Is there a motion to approve? Mm -hmm. Second. Mm -hmm. Questions. All in favor, let it be known by the vote. Sign aye. aye. All opposed? Hearing none, it is um, approved. Um, appointments. Um, we have a nursing home adult care advisory. <coughs> Ms. Stephanie Walker is interested and willing to serve. Is there a motion to appoint Ms. Walker? Mm -hmm. Questions? All in favor, let it be known by the vote sign aye. Aye. All opposed, hearing none, it is approved. Carolina Gateway Partnership, the private sector, we have Mr. Richard Anderson is recommended. Is there a motion? Question. All in favor, let it be known by the vote sign aye. All opposed, hearing none, it is approved. Ms. Carolina Lights Park Arena Board, we read the memo. Uh, Mr. J.F. Lankers has resigned, and Jeff Lankers is his son and familiar with the, the duties of that job that being recommended. Is there a motion to approve? Questions? All in favor, let it be known by the vote sign aye. All opposed, hearing none. That is complete out of lease and releases for review and approval. Any questions or comments, Mr. Evans? Yes, sir. Happy to answer the questions. Hearing none, is there a motion to approve? Second. Second. Questions? All in favor, let it be known by the vote and sign aye. All opposed, hearing none. 
It is approved contract for review and anything for the board's attention. Just want to point out that this one contract here is for engineering and related services for the uh, HMGP elevation project, both for the county, there are 15 properties on that list, and for the town of Princeville, there are 75 properties on that list um, for engineering services and, and uh, project administration. Uh, this is all grant funded from uh, FEMA. Motion. Question. All in favor, that be no by the vote, sign aye. Aye. All opposed, carry none, it is approved. The department report for your water services, we've seen that report. Any, any, anything for your, that you need to bring to our attention? I, I do want to mention, uh, in particular for item A, water service, the water and sewer department. Uh, there, you had some discussion last yes, month. I saw the report. Mr. Matthews mm -hmm. was here and did a good job of talking about the water <coughs> situation. Uh, he's been working on identifying you know, the main suspects, the main reasons why we see and trying to, and, and from there working on trying to identify some strategies to um, to uh, cut back on that war loss. Um, so that will be an ongoing project. I like, we'll come back to you and discuss that a little bit more. And I think that it's a detailed report and I read it. Uh, there's some things in there maybe I got, I'll have in terms of the strategies anyway, in terms of, um, 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 we talked about reducing the water tap and what that would cost us, and the other was um, the, you know, charging the, for those in those districts that might. Don't we have an ordinance that deals with if you're in the district and don't get the search? Don't we have an ordinance in place for that? Some of the districts that's in place because of the funding that required that. Oh, is it? Okay. We, we, we do have an overall blanket. Uh, uh, policy for the county that water is available. You've chosen for whatever reason not to tap on. And at some point, your well fails and water is available. You will not issue a permit for your well. You have to end the same for sewer. If sewer is available, you won't issue a permit if there is. But I think that's something we need to continue to yes. discuss in terms of strategies. It uh, is a detailed report. Thank you for the report. I read it. <laughs> and um, any questions from the board? But we still have a really uh, big water loss. You know, but it appears that we're dealing with it. Anything else on those department I, reports? I'll just quickly mention item F. Uh, there was some discussion from you last month about the franchise agreement that had been approved for our demand transport LLC. Uh, that the company has had no activity so we've since, uh, from emergency services, our emergency service director sent a letter basically saying that. That franchise has been rescinded. Certainly, if they if we hear from them, they, they can always come back and apply for it. And, and they are aware of that. They, they are. They are always no one is aware of that. Yeah. Anything else on those? And that's it for any, any questions from the board. Hearing none, moving on to manager's report. <coughs> uh, under manager's report, you've seen it there. We have been have it driven out that way lately. We've been having some. Uh, logging going on out at uh, Kingsborough Industrial Park. You'll see in the report we received some revenue already, starting to receive some revenue already from that. Um, I, I do really, uh, item C is more for more so for the audience. I just want to remind our audience members that the 2020 census is coming soon. Um, the official start date is April the 1st, but people can probably expect to start receiving information in the mail before that. Uh, be sure to be on the lookout for it. It's not junk mail. We want to encourage as many people to participate as possible. Um, the 2010 census, we had a 75% uh, participation rate. Uh, our goal is to try to increase that to at least 80%. Um, we have a number of folks in there that are a part of our complete count committee that this board formed and appointed. I want to thank them for their hard work. We've been trying to do a lot of things to get the word out. So just a, a reminder to our citizens. Eric, also with that, remind our citizens there are jobs possible yes. with the census count. Yes. Um, so please go on the website. <clears throat> if you have a young person that needs a part-time job, that's a, a good idea to support that. They're paying very well. I'll make sure some of the county to get some of those dollars. And, and I have some handouts here that if anyone here is interested before you leave, please come by and pick one up. Uh, we do have a page on our website. Anyone can go to our website, edgecombecountync.gov, and find the link and go to a page. We've got lots of information, including 
um, the number to call to, to apply for those uh, census jobs. Um, for item E, I, I know if the meeting has gone along, but I, I would like for Mr. Johnson to come up and uh, just tell you a little bit about how it's been going with our solid waste uh, permit implementation. Good evening, board. Uh, on January 2nd, 2020, the solid waste permit policy went into effect. Today, February 3rd, we began denying customers at the convenience sites who did not produce the proper permit required. Mm -hmm. Our offices are still receiving a lot of calls from citizens who did not receive a permit in mail, and our staff are doing an excellent job of helping citizens receive their permit. Um, just an anecdote, I recently helped a citizen, Mrs. Faskell, who helps many of our Hispanic population navigate the rules and laws of various levels of government. Um, we were able to help her understand the process so that she can relay the message to our Spanish-speaking population to ensure that they have what they need going forward. Uh, we are continuing to discover, discover some property that was not listed with the tax office and are going forward, and going forward will be taxed appropriately. We are also discovering properties who should have been charged a solid waste fee on their tax bill but were not, and staff has made those corrections. Just a reminder to the public, any property that was not being charged a solid waste fee but should have been will be getting a bill uh, from the tax office for that solid waste fee. Uh, to date, we have sold $1,100 worth of permits to, to municipal citizens, meaning people that live in town who typically do not have a right to our convenience sites, but they have paid the $100 uh, solid waste fee and now can use our convenience sites. Um, at your May meeting, I plan to come back and present to you uh, the numbers from the solid waste department. I do not want to make any estimates at this time, but we believe the cost incurred by the county to ship household waste from our site to the landfill in Bertie County will come down. So in May, I will uh, come back and review some of those numbers with you. Um, citizens who have still not received their permit and feel they should have, uh, still can call myself at 641-5775 or the solid waste department at 827-4253. I'll have, if you guys have any questions, I, that's all I have. Yes, ma'am. Uh, <clears throat> I've been asked by people who live in a rental property and they want to know why they didn't get one. And I was like, whoever owns the property, I believe, gets it. That's correct, yes, ma'am. So now, if you own a trailer park and you have a bunch of people out there, what happens? So we, the tax office generated a list for me um, of homeowners or property owners who have multiple dwellings on a property. So the, the solid waste fee isn't a tax attached to your, your land property. It's attached to your real estate property, um, your home. Um, so any landlord that has multiple mobile homes on a given property, say, I received a list from the tax department, um, and they received the adequate amount of um, Okay, so the mobile home people, yes, they own Yes, ma'am. And, and I've run into that a lot. I've run into where, you know, instances where landlords don't want to give these permits to their tenants um, for various reasons. In the policy that you guys passed, we did make a caveat for that. As long as that renter can come to the landfill, show that they are renting that property, um, either through um, a electric bill or some means like that, they can pay $10 for the replacement cost and get a permit. Okay, so one more question. And my mother-in-law is one thing. Yes, ma'am. She lives in a home, she does not actually own it, but she worked on that farm for so long that the people who own it given her lifetime rights. So how would she get a permit? So if that home, home is in an unincorporated area, her, my first suggestion to her would be to ask the owner that received the permit if she could get those permits because she's the one living there. They don't live in the, they don't live in the state. Yes, ma'am. <coughs> the second option would be to then just through a utility bill or some means show us that she's living there and she could pay that $10 replacement cost and get a set of permits. Yes, ma'am. Mama, mama, law, daughter, 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 son, daughter. We can never have that problem. Daughter, son. I need to be able to name them. Bring us to the dollars. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
because um, you know one of the first steps of that was going to come upon us next year, which uh, the stipulation that Rocky Mountain's participation in providing that gap funding for current expense will stop. Um, so we need to start talking about um, the impact of legislation. So uh, our recommendation is, and their board is considering the same thing at uh, their board meeting today. Uh, February the 24th, we suggest we have dinner at 5.30 and the meeting at 6. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the person that. Yeah, but that's not available. Yeah, we're going to have really, it's really going to be a three meeting because we, this right. one, this one, we kind of require to have it. And, and the school system is going to host us at one of the schools. I don't know if we're school yet, but as soon as I know, it's going to be on the day. Um, item G, you want to point out, as I mentioned earlier, um, I believe the, the appointment of the interim director and corporate extension. Um, uh, R. Bradley, who was uh, recently hired for a uh, district director position, and so um, his exit was Tammy Heath. Uh, been with Clark Extension. Oh, there she is. Heath is the interim director for Clark Extension. We're happy to have her in that. And we just, we, I will be working along with uh, folks at NC State. Um, uh, the position has already been posted, um, and I'll be participating with them in the interviews. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Um, item H, uh, I, I want to mention that we've, as you know, we've been having monthly meetings with Edgewood County Rescue Squad. Um, you know, we have been monitoring issues that were discovered a couple of years ago. Uh, most of those had, uh, you know, of a, of a budget nature uh, to it. Um, just to remind you, this current year, you're, in your budget, you approved one point two million dollar appropriation to the uh, Rescue Squad. Uh, from our meetings and what they're reporting to us, it looks like that's not going to be enough to make it to the end of this fiscal year. Um, and so um, we're not at the point to, to bring a request to you for additional funds, but I want you to know that that's likely on the way. Um, but we are also um, having some discussion with the rescue squad about um, you know how do we move forward? What kind of structure do we want to have move forward? What kind of oversight we want to have if, if the county is going to put in uh, additional funds. So I just wanted you to know that that conversation is going on um, and that we'll be you know, working on some more on more specifics that we'll be bringing back to the board. And I'm uh, happy to answer any questions. Any questions? If not, Commissioner Spoy, I think I'm sorry. Sure. One last thing, just, just a reminder, it's not on your agenda, but just a reminder, that the dedication of this room to Commissioner Felton will be on the 21st at, uh, at 10 a.m. Yeah. That's it for my So if, if there's anything uh, that we need to address before then, make sure we get a call to Yes, sir. For this day, okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, Commissioner's report, anything to be I have two things. Go ahead. One very brief. I have experienced this myself. My wife has, and I've also had a couple people in my district have a hard time getting people from the 
candidate returning to college. I'll, I'll talk with Mr. Eric about specific departments. You know, the decisions of the candidate need to be talked about. There's one customer trying to attempt it six times to get to somebody. And I know she had the right number, so I just want to break that down. The second thing I wanted to bring up is, we're probably tired of talking about it, but I think part of the snafu we're facing tonight with the farmers and with the health individuals is partly my fault. However, what ended up happening is what should have happened to start with. I think we handled it a little bit. It was not handled that well. We allowed both sides to come together in this room and discuss the issue. Fortunately, it might have worked out exactly as I think it should. Regardless of how the voting ends and regardless of how you vote or who you vote for, I'm just saying, we need, as commissioners, as leaders of the county, to allow people to get together and discuss things before we try to dictate to them what we want to do after listening to both sides. And I think that resulted from the, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Peters, when I made the motion, it was to ban it, to ban it from the property, and then I allowed Mr. Wooden to amend it to say, count the property everywhere. Is that correct? Or, I mean, Generally, I interpreted you as withdrawing your motion so that right. you can make this. <coughs> so that's where the snafu came from. I know. I see it as a snafu. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Regardless of each one of the personal and private opinion of what we're talking about tonight, what we did here tonight was a great thing in allowing people to get together and discuss something instead of just trying to push it in the direction. And that's all I want to say. I learned a great deal and have learned a great deal for this experience. I spoke to a lot of the Department of Bureau folks on Monday night and they were very convenient to me. And these people, uh, whether you agree with them or disagree with them or help them to do it, whether you agree with them or disagree with them, that's what the box is about. That's what we're allowing to take place here. And that's the way we should have been at the And that's all I'm going to say. Thank you. And I took it as a, the meeting as a, uh, a, a meeting that <coughs> when the public comes in, we respond to the public. The public came, the public. It was two different responses <laughs> in terms of, and that was based on the fact that the public stood there and asked this board, and and depending upon who that public was, and we are political, and their political body made a change in their decision based on the public input. While some while we disagreed differently, it was just a good, the first time I've seen it happen. Just, in this board, but it did happen, but it was a good experience to me. That's the way I, when, when people come and put the pressure on this board, and this board makes a decision, and that was an exercise of what the public can do. That's the way I view that. I didn't view that as a snap food. I did I, I visited as, 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 as a good work in progress. While I disagreed with the decision, it still was a good, a good work in process. And boards, and it's good that board does not have boards do not have to be unanimous. When boards have dissenting opinions, it's it's a good board. It's a working board, and we all agree something is just, something is wrong. Next, any other commission? I, I wanted to say, as a member um, of the human services board, um, we have an open meeting. It consists of the um, DSS board and the board of health together. That meeting is open to the public to come whenever there's a meeting that they can come discuss their opinions. Um, we want to make sure nobody shows up at DSS meeting, human services meeting, board of health meeting. But then it blows up. So people need to start taking advantage of the opportunity to attend each and every one of those meetings and give an opinion. Uh, speaking of such board, I believe three months ago I was appointed to the health department board. But uh, after not receiving a call, I found out that I was uh, an unfit candidate. <laughs> really? Yeah. What you do? Because I do not also serve on the health and human services board. And it was in, given to me that, to be a member of the health board representative of commissioners who also must serve, serve on the health and human services. Kick, 
Can you strike down that? Uh, it's, it's, in, it's in the <coughs> Health and Human Services. Health and Human Services Board bylaws that in order to serve on either one of the advisory boards, you must be a Health and Human Service Board member. Right. Well, I thought I thought you would put on there. No, 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 not no, uh, regional head. Why don't you want you on regional head? I'm on that, but I was also you were putting me also yeah. to, to that board. And, yeah, I, I was on it. I was unaware of it until I was. Uh, I had to call to say, uh, do y'all not like me or what? <laughs> we can fix that. Is there a vacancy on the The question is, I don't recall that because I'm the, I'm the person that serves at the county committee. I don't recall. I don't recall. <coughs> Mr. Johnson called me and told me what about the It was requested of one of my department heads that okay. can serve. Okay. So I called to give you a heads up, and then when I went back to my bylaws to check, I realized that you were not eligible. Okay. So Everything's cool. Well, but when you tell a when a staff tell a commissioner they yeah, not, you know what I'm saying? So it puts, it puts them in an awkward it puts them in an awkward position for a staff to tell a commissioner they are not. You know, so I, I, so it, it I don't I because I didn't I know I didn't remember us. Uh, <laughs> Us, I do remember putting you on the uh, region L, but I don't remember. So the board, it's not something that the board took action on. But no, if, if there is a vacancy, he does not, he, he does not necessarily have to be put on the board as a commissioner. He can still serve on the board. Is there, is there a vacancy? Um, I'm not 100% sure. Check, and, check, and, check, and, check and see if there is a vacancy. I'm not advocating for such. I'm just committing to do my assigned duties as I thought. But, but I, I promise you, I'll never get too big on my britches. Well, I don't know. He said he was put in an awkward position and had to tell you you weren't eligible. <laughs> uh, and, and attorney? Okay. Um, at this time, ladies and gentlemen, we're scheduled for closed session to discuss economic development and personnel. Is there a motion for that? Motion. Motion. All in favor of the no matter what side, aye. aye. All opposed. Hearing none, we'll be one of the closed sessions. Thank yeah, yeah, yeah. This is kind of wrong. Yeah, very much so. I got to go on again.